Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to be starting something new. Ugreen just sent me their DXP4800 Plus NAS along with four four terabyte drives and I'll be putting it through its paces. So I actually used to run a computer service business and back then NAS or network attached storage was mostly something you'd only see in enterprise setups. For home use, this is actually my first time building a dedicated NAS. So until now, my setup has been pretty basic. I use a single 16 terabyte external hard drive connected to an older i7 Mac mini. Now that one drive has been doing pretty much everything from time machine backups for two computers, just acting as a general file server, and for Plex for movies, my kids' soccer games, and also for my YouTube projects. But it does have some major drawbacks. First of all, the drive goes to sleep and I get delays every time I try to access it. Second, the i7 Mac Mini really struggles with real-time 4K transcoding. And worst of all, there's no redundancy, so if the drive fails, I lose everything. And that's why I'm excited to test out this NAS. So on paper, the DXP4800 Plus looks pretty solid. It uses a 12th gen Intel Pentium Gold CPU with eight gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, expandable to 64 gigs. It has both 10 gigabit ethernet and a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port you get up to 136 terabytes of storage capacity. So that's if you use four 30 gigabyte drives and the two slots for SSDs. You can use a dual NVMe slots for either SSD caching or for extra storage. It has a front USB-C, USB-A, and an SD card reader. It even has a 4K HDMI output for direct playback. That might be useful. And it's priced pretty reasonably at $594. So what I'll be testing is ease of setup. Ugreen says this NAS is beginner friendly, the drive trays are toolless, and the software walks you through the setup. I wanna see how smooth that process really is. They have some called Video Center and HDMI output, so I'll upload some large videos, organize them in the NAS, and then try playing them across devices on my laptop, on my phone, and directly on the TV via HDMI. It also has something called AI Photo Album Assistant, which I guess they use as AI to be able to search through them. I'll quickly test that. It also has Docker support so apps can run independently, which is very useful. So I'll be running Plex inside of Docker to see if this finally solves my 4K transcoding issues. So that's the plan. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so I'm gonna try to do this for the first time. I'm gonna pop out one of the drive bays here. And I guess you're supposed to press here to pop this out to make space. So they sent four of these four terabyte Western Digital Red Plus hard drives. I think it's just as easy as popping the drive down, closing this. That looks pretty good. It's not moving. And if I slide this back in, there's one. So that's pretty easy. Do the same for the second one. Drive three. So that's pretty easy. Toolless, no need for a screwdriver. And just like that, I've installed the four hard drives. All right, so I have the NAS installed here in my garage where I have my home theater stuff. Just because it's quieter, this is actually not very loud. So now I wanna see what the software experience is like. First thing I did was download the Ugreen NAS app on my Mac. It walks you step by step. And the text is kind of small here, but later on you'll see that it is much easier to see using their web interface. Then it walks you through setting up the hard drives. You can see each of the four terabyte drives and you'll notice that only 3.6 terabytes is available. That's normal. And as I select each drive that I wanna use as the volume, it'll show you the different types of configurations you can set up. It shows you the pros and cons of each. For me, I'm gonna go with a RAID 5 setup. For me, that's the optimal use of storage space and I get some redundancy and extra speed. Next, you'll see it'll start to optimize the drive. It says syncing 1.6%. And I was kind of worried because it said six hours and 25 minutes. And what I realized is that you can actually still do other things while it's doing this. This is the web UI, much easier to read, and you can do pretty much everything you need to do from this interface. I find it very easy to use. There was an update available, and I wanted to make sure to do that first. The interface really does remind me of a Mac user interface. This is the App Store, and here I'm installing various apps. I'll start with the theater one. I wanna test the Photos app as well. Let's get the Music app, this backup app that works with RSync, and of course, Docker. I'll use this to install Plex. Surprisingly, the installation was pretty simple. They had a container image here. I just added it. I named it and told it which folders it could access. 
and that was pretty much it. Plex opened very quickly. I'm able to access all of my existing files here and notice how it plays instantly. Previously, my main issue was with transcoding. And so here, I'll go ahead and transcode it to 1080p. Boom, it's pretty much instant, no issue. Let's try it with 720p, no issue. And let's even try, let's see, let's try 320. Okay, easy. That was a 4K SDR video. Let's try this 4K HDR video and plays instantly as well. Transcode takes a little bit longer to start, but it works, no problem, no stuttering. With direct play, there's no transcoding, so there's no issue. If I do transcode to 1080p with this 4K HDR, you can see that there's still no issue. CPU usage is low, RAM usage is still low. All right, so I just installed the two NVMEs. They're both 512 gigabyte. And the idea is that I wanted redundancy because these aren't the most expensive, so I don't know how great they are and I don't want to lose data. So those are easy to install. Ugreen also includes these thermal pads that sit here to help dissipate the heat to the outer case, so that's pretty cool. This is something that I like to do is I put a piece of foil on the thermal pads just because I've seen before where maybe the thermal pad can get attached to the actual door itself so you go to pull it off especially when there's a lot of heat involved you go to pull it off and then it might damage the SSDs and so by putting the foil here it'll still be able to transfer the heat properly but it won't stick to the door now eventually I want to upgrade this 8 gigabyte stick of RAM to maybe 32 gigs something like that you can do up to 64 but I think 32 will be fine for my use after installing the NVMEs, they show up here in the user interface. And what I want to do is now set them up for use as an SSD cache. So let's go ahead and do that. Next, it's going to ask you which volume you want to use as cache. So I'm going to use the main volume here. They give you two options, one to improve the read and write cache, but that requires two drives. That's the one that I want. Here's where you can set redundancy on the SSDs. In case one goes out, I won't lose any data. So I mainly did this just for future proofing. I wasn't expecting a huge increase in speed for the stuff that I do. I'm not using it as a virtual machine right now. So they're there and now I am set. Now I did also say that I wanted to test the photo app. They have a people recognition similar to what Google Photos does. Initially it didn't work so I deleted it and reinstalled it and that was all it took for it to work. So if you're having that issue, go ahead and try that. It found the photos with me in it flawlessly these are the photos from me at cedia with osd and the guys over there and it also works on video so this is a time to kind of go over my conclusions compared to my mac mini with the external drive setup this is way better i just feel more secure with it being always on there's no lag with the drive spinning up and everything just works flawlessly one thing i also notice is the file transfer for some reason is faster with this maybe it's because it's using this four bay raid array so here i'm transferring a five gigabyte file and it takes less than a minute which is faster than it was before the bottleneck in my system is that i'm still using a one gigabit ethernet switch but i eventually want to upgrade to 2.5 or 10 gigabit ethernet so i can reach the maximum speed of 1250 megabytes per second and i also think that it looks super cool i'm happy to finally have a nas drive but i do want to upgrade it with some larger drives eventually. And the SD card in the front is super handy because like I told you, I record my kids' soccer games and after I'm done, I can just pop them directly in there, transfer the files, it shows up in Plex, then my wife and I can watch it on our bedroom TV and I can even share the videos in case somebody on the team wasn't able to make the game, they can watch it later. The setup really was pretty straightforward. It was easy. There were a few terms that I didn't know, so I had to look them up. But overall, pretty simple setup. I did test out their video center and it did work for the movies that I had. It was able to look up the metadata and match the artwork. I thought it was interesting that this thing had HDMI out. So I did connect that to my setup and it does do 4K, but SDR and only in stereo. I wish that it would have done Atmos and HDR, etc. But I think this is more for if you wanna just review some of your footage, it can do that in 4K but in stereo. Now, as far as using this as a Google Photos alternative, I think it definitely can. I installed the app on my phone and it gives you an option to back up any photo that you take, any video you take, and it's pretty quick and it's smart enough to only do it when you're on Wi-Fi so it doesn't take up all your data. You can choose to use it over data, 
that's up to you. You can also set up another user and have their photos also backed up on the NAS. Other thing you can do with NAS is you can share with other people outside of your local network and it makes it pretty straightforward. You just type in their email and it gives them permission. You can give them a password and you can set when that expires. So as far as backup, I use Mac, so I use Time Machine and it does give you an option to use this as a Time Machine backup. Now keep in mind that this only works with the internal drives. If you install an external drive, it will not be able to use that for Time Machine. If you want to do something Something more advanced you can set up rsync and what that does is a delta backup and so let's say if you change a large file but only a few things have changed in it it'll only have to sync the change and not the entire file now redundancy is important when it comes to backing up so i do want to have a backup for the nas drive and i'll store that somewhere else and i probably will also get some kind of external cloud storage for that backup. Because Ugreen sent these four terabyte drives to test out, that's what I'm using currently, but I eventually wanna upgrade those to maybe 20 terabyte drives each. And so I'll have to do all of those because with RAID 5 on this particular setup, you have to install all of the drives that are the same size, otherwise it's gonna default down to the smallest drive. So if I get three 20 terabyte drives, it's still going to look at each drive as four terabytes until I install the last one. So definitely for home theater enthusiasts like myself, this is gonna be awesome if you wanna use this as a Plex server, it does that beautifully. You can get more advanced and start doing some home automation type of stuff. If you wanna save on cloud storage fees, this is something you can definitely do. The Google Cloud Storage is not that cheap. And so you can do a lot of that with something like this. So overall, I'm happy with the ease of use. I'm happy with how fast the processor is, the upgradability. It serves the purpose that I wanna use it for perfectly. So right now it's priced at $594. And I think that that is a very competitive price. You can take a look at some of the competitors and see what they're offering and you'll find that this is a good value and it's an even better value because they've offered 20% off with a discount code. I'll leave a link down in the description for that. So that's pretty much it. That is my experience with the Ugreen NASSYNC DXP4800+. Plus. I hope you guys found some of that useful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. So thank you for watching. Thank you to Ugreen for the opportunity to test this stuff out and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.